You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. My whole childhood, from what I can remember, just wasn't, wasn't good. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I've never... Fuck's sake. I don't even know why I'm about to cry. I hate just speaking about the past, sorry. It's okay, take your time. He was very good at hiding near the beginning. And I remember there was times where I'd, like, to get into my house, I'd go around to the back door because my mum would always leave the back door open for me and I must have been about 12, 13 at this time. And I'd go around and I'd see him literally injecting in the living room and with his friends. And I'd run upstairs, I'd be like, mum, mum, he's, he's, he's doing drugs, he's doing drugs. And she'd be like, shut up. I started drinking at 13. And I think I took my first drug as well at 13. And I was clubbing at 13. Like, that's crazy. Like, I've got a daughter now. If, she, if I found out she was drinking and doing drugs and going clubbing at 13, I'd lose it. I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. And I remember just like, I hate crying, I'm sick of crying. Um, and I remember I run down the lane and everyone's trying to like find me or whatever. And it, it sounds so pathetic now when I think about it, but there was like a bin bag, like in one of the lanes in the back by the, by the by a bin, obviously. And um, I got the bin bag, it was like an empty one. And I wrapped it around my neck and I was literally squeezing, squeezing so tight. And I was thinking, I don't, I don't even want to be here anymore. I was like, Hate crying. Me and my brother would share a box room. Wasn't decorated, nothing. Literally just had the bare minimum in that room. And we'd just be in that room for like, I, I, it was like we wasn't a part of the family. So my mum and my, my sister and her partner, they'd all eat on the table. And then, oh, I can feel like this is therapy. <laughs> Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Letitia Grace. How are you, Hi. gorgeous? I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. It's nice to like see you in person because yeah. I watch you on YouTube all the time. Thank you. Yeah, but yeah. can't lie, I'm shit in my pants. Yeah, and so you should be. <laughs> oh, good then. I read your book. Yeah. Valleywood. Yeah. You've read that. You've um, had quite a bit of a turmoil life for such a young girl. Yeah, I have, to be honest. And I feel like... I wrote that like so long ago, like no one really knows my story. Do you know what I mean? I was, I was Letitia Grace obviously then, but I didn't have like a big platform like I have now. So that's why I wanted to really come here and speak to you about it. Yeah, that's mm. cool then. I yeah. always go back to the start with my guests, where you grew up and how it all began. Um, I grew up in Batalbert. It's like a small town in um, Wales. It's kind of a shit doll, but I love it. Sorry, guys, because everyone, <laughs> everyone back home goes nuts to me when I say yeah. that, but it's home in it. Um, yeah, my mum had five kids. I was the oldest, and she she brought us up as a single mother. Um, and that's my backstory, really. No, it was not. You're a bit, <laughs> no, it's fucking not. You're a bit of a rebel at school. Yeah, you got expelled and stuff. You were a bit of a yeah. class clown. Yeah. What was the school in like? Was a because we'll touch on your stepdad later on in the interview. But why was you such a little Do you fucking know what? Like. I feel like, cause I had so much going on in my home life, I struggled in school. Like I felt like that was the only place that I could get attention. So I feel like I was naughty because one, I wanted to make everyone laugh. And two, I feel like I got more attention when I was naughty, if that made sense. Cause I wasn't getting attention at home. I, cause I ask myself this all the time. I, I always think like, why was I like that in school? Because I'm smart, do you know what I mean? But I act, I acted dumb, but I think that's the reason. Yeah, everybody craves attention differently mm. through being the class clown or being the loudest or trying to be the best, yeah. most academic. Everybody in the world is different. Yeah. Now, just because you were a pain in the ass at school doesn't mean you're a bad person. I was a class clown as well. I made everyone laugh yeah. because it got me attention. I can still, I can sit with any calibre of a person and fit right in. Yeah, I would same. adapt like many faces for different, like, different faces for different places. It's, that's just the way I was. I conditioned myself to be like that. Why mm. were you not getting the love at home? Is that your mum struggling or? I mean, yeah, like obviously you've read the book and stuff and I don't know, I, I, my whole childhood from what I can remember just wasn't, wasn't good. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I, I've never, fuck's 
sick. I don't even know why I'm about to cry. Oh, I hate just speaking about the past, sorry. It's okay, take your time. Can we cut that bit out because that's embarrassing? Take your time. I hate crying. Can you speak about the past much? No. To try and block it out? Yeah. But you've got to understand how far you've come in life. So you're as much as the past is brutal and mm. painful, it also makes you who you are, stronger, more wiser. Wi yeah. More wiser. Well, probably it's um, the pain in the past is a beautiful thing. A lot of people, it can destroy a lot of people, but yeah. it can kick a lot of people on. 100%. And I say this all the time because, <clears throat> sorry, let me just get myself together. Fuck, I feel emotional. It's the time of the month as well, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hide right. the knives, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so um, I say this all the time because my brother, I don't know if you know, he's like a big rugby player now. And we um, we obviously grew up together. I'm four years older than him. So I've always felt like I've mothered him. He's been through the same as same things as me. But because he was younger, he doesn't really like remember much. And um, I always say like, we wouldn't be where we are today if what we went through. If we didn't go what we went through kind yeah. of thing. Do you know what I mean? So as much as it's bitter, it's sweet as well. Because if if I didn't go through all that shit, I don't feel like I'd be where I am right now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Of course, man. Mm. And that's where the... I always say that shit, but you find your light... Only reason you find your light is going through the darkness mm -hmm. in life. Now, we've all go through shit in life. Every yeah. single person goes through it. Some people it breaks. Some people it makes them go, I ain't going to live that life. I ain't going to give my kids that life. Yeah. So it is different like, Everybody sees the world differently. Everybody handles heartbreak differently. Everybody handles abuse differently. Getting expelled from school differently. Addictions differently. Some people came out at the blessed mm -hmm. ones came out at. I feel blessed to come out my misery and darkness. God, yeah. But I still battle, including yourself. You can still see the emotion. Even probably leading up to this interview, you probably knew the emotion. But it's good to clear the air. Also, it's good to go. Do you know what? Fuck it. That's my 100%. chapter. It's done. Now I'm going to create the new one. Your brother, congratulations. I've seen that he signed a new contract as well. Yeah. So shout out to your brother. Yeah. But you clearly got you're, you've clearly got stardom in your family where mm -hmm. people like your brother would probably seen you going through a lot of madness and suicidal thoughts and darkness in your life. Yeah. But you kicked on, you made the changes and that's what it's all about. Yeah. So then Like we had nothing, yeah, do you know what I mean? Strength there. So when you're going through like your mum and your dad, because in the book it's called Living with the Devil. Yeah. One of the chapters with your stepdad, who you thought was a loving man, but then turned to drinks, mm. violence, abuse. What age were you when you started realising that something wasn't right? I think when my mum met him, I must have been 10, I think around 10. And obviously she brought him around us. And I was just like, because I didn't have my dad growing up. I was so happy. I was like, oh my God. I was like, he, he was so nice. He took us to the shop. He bought us sweets. And he was like, he was a lovely man. I got to give it to him. He was amazing. And I thought, oh, I finally got a dad. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's how I felt. Um, oh, I don't want to cry. I'm sick of crying. Um, and yeah. And then we lived together for a bit. And then we moved. And then my mum got married very fast. I would say it was less than a year, a couple of months. And I feel like that's when I started to see a change. Like he started going out with his mates a lot. And then I think he just fell into the wrong crowd and ended up doing the wrong things. Drugs, heroin, he ended heroin. up heroin, crack. Heroin. I think it was heroin. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was heroin. It mm -hmm. wasn't crack. Was it in the book as well? Who was the family member that was in the car while he was smoking crack? Um, so or basically heroin? my auntie um, had her had a boyfriend at the time and he was heavy on heroin. And then my stepfather started hanging around with him and then for some reason he fell into that as well so yeah but drugs do change people and it is difficult yeah, to see something it's crazy like he went from like the nicest man like my savior to the devil like it's it's absolutely mental what like hard drugs can do to you like was, was there no telltale signs right at the start for your mum did your mum notice that um I think my mum noticed, but I think she kind of turned a blind eye. But like, he was very good at hiding near the beginning. And I remember there was times where I'd like, to get into my house, I'd go around to the back door because my mum would always leave the back door open for me. And I must have been about 12, 13 at this time. And I'd go around and I'd see him literally injecting in the living room. 
and with his friends and I'd run upstairs. I'd be like, mom, mom, he's, he's, he's doing drugs. He's doing drugs. And she'd be like, shut up, stop chatting shit. Like he's not doing drugs. So I think like she, I don't know. I think she was kind of oblivious to it at the denial. start, but I knew I, did, I, yeah. I, I didn't really know much about drugs. Do you in know denial, what I mean? though. Huh? Your mum probably in denial. Yeah, in denial. Probably try to cover Because she loved tracks. him. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? Love this powerful thing. Yeah, and she thought, like, he was the one. She got married to him. Like, he was good to her kids. So, yeah, I think she was definitely in denial at the beginning. Because your mum fell pregnant twice in the space. I just... Oh, yeah. And I remember the first away. time she got pregnant, I was happy. And then the second time I got pregnant, obviously he was on the drugs and everything then. And I was just like, I remember just crying my eyes out. I was just like, no. I was like, what? Like, why are you doing this? And she... It, she wasn't expecting that from me. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, she got pregnant literally. Well, there's a year between them. So it was pretty much straight away. How old were you? I was about, when she first got pregnant with her first first kid with him, I was 12. And then I think I was 13 on the next kid, my next brother or sister. Yeah, so it was, yeah. I don't want to say their names. Because but crucial years them. for any kid to yeah. see that shit. Now, yeah. any sort of trauma and there's, like I think like sixty seven percent of childhood trauma mm. has a bigger effect to then have addictions when you're older mm. because we don't know how to, to deal with trauma. We don't know how to deal with pain, especially at a young age. Like your mum and dad, they ain't therapists, they ain't, yeah. they don't know how to speak out. So you've done it through being a class clown, yeah, being a daft ass, yeah. Do you know what I mean? To hide, hide the pain and drinking on the weekends. What my age friends. did you start drinking? Um, I started drinking at 13 and I think I took my first drug as well at 13 and I was clubbing at 13. Like, that's crazy. Like, I've got a daughter now. If she, if I found out she was drinking and doing drugs and going clubbing at 13, I'd lose it. I would never allow that to happen. Like, Beautiful that's, daughter, by the way, Winter. Oh yeah, she'd be yeah. crunchy, yeah. And yeah. she's five, nearly six. And it's just, oh God, it's crazy to think like in another six years, she'd be doing drugs and stuff. But that's my aim, do you know what I mean? To just give her the best childhood she could ever imagine. Like she, I give her so much love. Like I must tell her about 40 times a day I love her. And I think that's important. Yeah, definitely. What age did your stepdad start coming out of your life? Um, so uh, the one we're speaking about, the heroin guy, yeah. he was my uh, second stepdad. So I had a stepdad before that, who is um, my sister's father. And we lived with him, um, I think I was about four, four till six, something like that. And he was an absolute twat as well, to be honest. Um, I don't even know what to say about it. He just like, he just treated me and my brother terrible, if I'm honest with you. Like my sister would have like, she was like the, the princess. She'd have the, like, the amazing room. And then me and my brother would share a box room. Wasn't decorated, nothing. Literally just had the bare minimum in that room. And we'd just be in that room for like, I, I, it was like we wasn't a part of the family. So my mum and my, my sister and her partner, they'd all eat on the table. And then, oh, I can feel like this is therapy. <laughs> So yeah, like we were, me and my brother were just treated so differently. Like they'd eat on the table, we'd eat out in the hallway on the stairs. Like it was just crazy. How old were you then? Six, I think. And my brother was like, I'm four years older than him. So he was like two, he was young. He doesn't remember much of it, but obviously as a six year old, you're going to remember things like that. And I remember he was just such a horrible man. I remember little things like, do you know your, your memory? Like it blocks the bad things out, doesn't it? Yeah. I remember things like he'd put us in the car seat and I, he'd pinch us and he'd pinch my brother and I'd see, like, he was just horrible to us. Like, I hate him. Yeah, he's a horrible bastard, man. That's, yeah. that's abuse at its highest level. That Not just physical, but mental. Mm. Mental abuse is worse. To feel like an outcast, to feel like an outsider, to feel like you're not good enough, to not feel like you're loved. And that's how when people go through their teenage years, they get addictions, they crave the boyfriends, sexual partners, because then you get the attention with being a basically a jackass at school to get yeah. feeling good and feeling as if you were loved and important. But yeah. it's a l wrong, it's not It's not really the right kind of love. Same mm. as all the criminals I interview, like every single one is the abandonment issues there where they crave a love and attention through fear and power. So people fear them, they don't love them. 
people yeah. want to be their friends because they're scared of them there's a difference it's, and it's difficult like no matter what you do in life no matter how far you go on that like, the pain of the past is always going to be there no 100%. matter how successful you come no matter how big a show you can get or hit a best-selling book no matter what the fuck it is when we spoke earlier that like, when you go home and you shut the curtains are you really happy then mm. that's when the fucking demons really kick in like nah, we can so prove, even sitting here it's that we put the masks on as well we're still scared that what do people think what yeah. they're going to do how they're going to judge God, us but i'm fuck. so scared of like what people think and i should but you know what like when i was younger i didn't used to be like i used to think fuck everyone i don't give a fuck i'll, I'll do what i want i'll act how i want and I kind of miss that person. But I, I think like, cause I've been in the public eye now for over 10 years, I think it's been over 10 years. Like, I think my, when I first went onto the valleys, I was 18 years old, that's so young, do you know what I mean? So like, I constantly had people like picking on my appearance, on the way I looked, on the way I acted. And then you think, shit, am I ugly? Am I not a ni nice person, do you know what I mean? So you kind of like, you're always like wary now. No, I feel like I'm wary of how to act and shit like that. Obviously I'm myself, but I don't feel like I'm my full self anymore because of all the trolling I've had and stuff. Of course, but you become sensitive. Now, the people who say fuck everyone is the ones who are really hurting the most because we mm. are so sensitive. Yeah. Like once you become sensitive towards life and understand it a bit more, remember you're still young. Yeah. You're still learning the craft. You're still understanding it. Wait a minute, all that external shit that you chase isn't where you're going to find your completion. It's not where you're going to find your fulfillment. Mm. Because when you're, if you're broken, that like was a part of me chase fame for a long time. Because you see people on magazines and TV and you think they look so happy. Mm. If I get that life, then it'll be everything. Then when you start getting it, you start realising it's fucking bullshit. Yeah, but Nothing changes is. up here. Nothing changes how you see the world because everything, and I always fucking repeat myself, but everything's within. You must dig deep within. Mm -hmm. Treat yourself right. Speak better. Act better. Yeah. Changes can be made. It's to try and break the connections or the pain of the past. Now, if you think about the past, if you think about those tra traumatic events, what happens is the brain releases a chemical to the pain you had felt that day. So the mm. brain doesn't know what's real or what's fake. So even you're talking about that and fe feeling teary-eyed, that's because the, the brain's releasing the chemicals to actually that time that you, it's taking you back 20 it's years crazy, ago, 25 years ago. The brain's a powerful thing. Yeah. You have to try and break the connection. So when you do think about the pain, the chemicals aren't there as much. And that's difficult. That's mm. how a lot of people work on their inner child is to go back to that moment and change the mindset and trick the brain to feeling that you don't want to feel fear anymore and scared. Yeah. It's fucking hard though. No, life's, yeah. Life's, life's is, mad. Life is mad. It's crazy. And it's mad like how things can just proper like fuck you up in the future. Do you know what I mean? That's why with like with my daughter, like I, I just, I'm so careful with her. I make sure she never sees me arguing. Like I just want her to have the happiest childhood ever. I never want her to grow up with that burden. Do you know what I mean? Of yeah. like a bad childhood. You can clearly see that the pain is still there. The trauma is still there, but you've got to give yourself credit it's still being here. I know. Do you know what I mean? That like, it's easy to have, take the easy way out, which it's not even an easy way out. Cause I know you've been suicidal a couple of times. You've tried to take your own life. Mm. How old were you? Um, I think the first time I must have been 12, 13, I think, I think, um, I think I'd done that in my house with a school tie or some, something like that. And then the one I remember the most was when I was like th 14, I think, I think I was out drinking with my friends and like, when I say drinking, I mean drinking, I would go to the, I'd stand outside the shop. I'd wait for like someone like older to go in and they'd get me like a liter of vodka and I'd down it and I mean like go, 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 go. like I can't drink for shits now but back then I just I just didn't care I just I just drunk to just block everything out and I remember um we were all drinking on the streets and we were going we were like in and out the lanes and stuff and I was just like I was like I don't want to be here anymore and I remember just like oh, I hate crying I'm sick of crying um and I remember I run down the lane and everyone's trying to like find me or whatever. And it, it sounds so pathetic now when I think about it, but there was like a bin bag, like in one of the lanes in the back by the, by the, by a bin, obviously. And um, I got the bin bag. It was like an empty one. And I wrapped it around my neck and I was literally squeezing, squeezing so tight. And I was thinking, I don't, I don't even want to be here anymore. I was like, I hate crying. Oh, sorry. That's okay, man. Take your time. 
but it gets funny because this is actually like you wouldn't believe this so I was like literally squeezing myself like this and then all of a sudden I just could smell something disgusting I was like what the fuck is that and um I looked in the fucking bin bag and there was like a dead kitten in that bin bag <laughs> so like what's the chances of that and I feel yeah. like that dead kitten Saved like saved life. my life mm -hmm. my friends always joke about it now yeah. but it's just mad like what's the chances of that you yeah. try killing yourself with a bin bag and there's a fucking dead kitten in it but you did you get any help after that no did you tell anyone? My friends, yeah. Um, what about your mum? No. How's your relationship with your mum? Did you feel as if you were abandoned by her as well? <clears throat> Sorry, I just don't want to cry in this. Um, do you know, like, my relationship with my mum growing up, I, I wouldn't even say it's like a like a mother and daughter relationship. So I want to get myself together because I don't want to be crying for this whole That's fucking okay, thing. Man. Oh, whew. yeah like with my mum I don't feel like we've ever had like a mother and daughter relationship like I'd look at my friends and their mums and stuff and they'd be like showing them affection kissing them like telling them that they love them and stuff but were you envious of a lot of your friends then? no I wasn't envious but I've just I'm just trying to say like I've never had that relationship with my mum mm -hmm. like only now I say we got a good relationship, but I feel like growing up, I, I can't ever remember getting hugs off my mum. I can't remember her telling me she loves me, which is mad, like. Is your mum, did she battle her own demons? Did she go through a lot of shit when she was younger yeah, also? Yeah, yeah. You tend to see that kind of as um, a connection. 100%. Or... And now I understand more. But like when I was younger, I used to think, why, why don't she love me? Mm -hmm. But now I've got older, like we've had conversations and stuff. I completely get why she was the way she is. I feel like when things happen to you, you either go one way or the other. You either become a really amazing loving mother, which I feel like I've done, or you become very distant and just you kind of you kind of do the same thing to your child, which was done to you kind of thing. So I feel like my mum went that way. And I, I don't blame her for it because what, she went, what she's been through and stuff is, is horrendous. When did you have that discussion with her? God, this was like five, mm, a few years ago, four or five years ago. And she was drunk and we had a conversation and she was like, she just basically said like, I'm sorry for the way I was to you. Um, and it's because of X, Y, and Z. And I was like, it's fine. But it was, it was good in a sense, like hearing that, do you know what I mean? Because I always thought like, why, why doesn't she treat me like a proper mum? But like I said, I can't, I can't blame yeah, her. Yeah, you can understand then why she was distant, cold hearted, but yeah, it's hard. Cold hearted because, is the word for it. You know She's very it's, cold. Yeah, so people who are cold have been through some shit in their life. Like mm -hmm. people don't see it, but everybody's yeah. got, and it's difficult when somebody's cold hearted, they don't tell you anything. So for you even going forward and saying, look, this happened to me as a kid, they don't want to hear it. I don't mm -hmm. want to know, I don't want to know. They don't want to understand yeah. because they've been through the pain. Mm -hmm. It's difficult, man. Like everybody's on their own process. Everybody's dealing with their own shit in life. Hundred percent. And like, there'll come a time though when everything will make sense. Everything will go right. Wait a minute, you need to let go of the past. Yeah. I ain't a fucking therapist. I'm only talking through experience and people who I interview. But there comes a time where you're going to need to. If, once you release it, you'll feel a weight off your shoulders. You'll feel like a different animal. You'll feel like hundred percent. Okay, it makes sense. You're probably at that stage of your life now. You're probably going yeah. to another chapter where you feel as if, okay, the time is now. Like speaking about this and going out to the masses and thinking, how's people going to see it? You're going to be surprised mm. how many people this is going to help also to understand. And this is why I wanted to do it because obviously my boyfriend, um, he knows my story and we always watch you and he was like, Tish, mm. you, need to go, you need to do an interview with him. He was like, because people just know you as Letitia Grace. They don't know like your backstory, like, my book, no one in this day and age really picks up a book and reads one, do they? But I did release that like in 2015, I think. Valleywood, it's called. Valleywood, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but he was like, you don't understand how many people you can help with your story. And I was like, do you know what? Like, you're, you're right. Like, if me doing this can help one person, then I've done a good job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. there comes a time when you've got to understand that life does go on. You can't let the past consume you. 100%. And, and let you eat, you, you can... The past can eat you away. Yeah. It's fucking horrible. Like, mm. it's, it is, it's a hard 
place to let go of now as much as I can promote it and try and preach it I still think about the past I yeah. still think I can't be asked getting out of my bed today mm-hmm. but you need to force yourself happiness ain't a 24-7 thing you don't just walk down the road skipping not. and living life yeah. you've got to really work on yourself try and eat the right things exercise just doing stuff that makes you feel good mm-hmm. I always try and I don't try and promote alcohol or that but a lot of people seem to go down easy route and drink Yeah, have a wine on a Wednesday night and that before you know it that one wine turns into a bottle every night mm-hmm. and because people rely on it so much to take them away from the pain of the past yeah. and it is difficult your first relationship was 14 uh, yeah, I was boy 14. Was, the boy was 18. When I got him, yeah, he was 18. So that's... That's still old as well. That's fucking... I know. Pedophilia, basically. I know. Do you know what? Like, it's mad. Like, at the time, I didn't think anything of it. I was just like... I don't know. I felt, I felt grown. Like I said, I've been clubbing since 13, mm. doing drugs and stuff. I just felt... I, like I said, I, I didn't think it was bad. But now I look back on it, if my daughter would go with an 18-year-old when she was 14, pff, there'd be ructions. Like, honestly, that it just wouldn't happen. Um, so it's kind of crazy to to see it that way. But, um, yeah, I felt like he was, like, my saviour, though, in a way. Do you know? Because, like, I didn't have, like, a man figure in my life. Like, I had, obviously, the devil. Um, I just felt like he kind of helped me at a time where I, where I needed someone. So, yeah, that relationship was was crazy, to be fair. But. Was that when you were craving attention? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Did it make you feel good though at the time? Yeah, like he was he was a good boyfriend to be fair at the beginning. How like, long did that last? We were together for four four years, I think. I finished no five years. I finished with him before Fuck I went on the valleys. Man, that's a long time. Yeah, so I was with him a long, long time. Did you ever have that discussion that he was eighteen and you were fourteen? No, never. You know, I didn't even think it was bad until like. The, like the other month, no, the other month, actually, I was speaking with someone about it and I was like, shit, I was 14 and he was 19. I remember at the time as well, my auntie was kicking off, like, because my mum told her that I was with um, an 18 year old. And I remember thinking, why is she going crazy? Like, um, he's only four years older than me, but it's actually like bad now when you think of it. Yeah, that's fucked up, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. But um, the relationship with him was just like, I just feel like I was young. I feel like he, he was a lot older than me. And I feel like when when we were together, I just felt like it was suppre- like I was suppressed because I was like young. I wanted to live my best life. And he was just like ready to like proper settle down. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I done drugs with him a lot as well. At 14? Yeah. That's fucked up, man. And I mean like we'd be on benders for like four days no sleeping no eat, no eat, like no eating just constant drugs because he was actually a drug dealer at the time as well was that a turn on for you was it a what a turn on like the bad boy the streets and <laughs> but for a fucking young no, kid you, man you shouldn't even know what that is i know it's mad you know when i look back at it now i think how did i do that it's crazy like we'd literally be in a house all my friends all his friends and literally just do drugs for four days straight I felt like it was like, I wouldn't say it was a turn on for me, but I felt like it was an escape for me. Like, yeah. I felt like I could es- escape everything. Were you, what age did you get expelled from school? Um, I think I was 16. It was in sixth form. So I'd done school and then I went to sixth form and they expelled me. Did you, do you know why? Yeah. Yeah. Why? But for the viewers, tell them why. Oh, right. <laughs> it's pathetic. Um, so... There was like this, my, like I said, I was the daredevil in it. I just made everyone laugh. And they were like, oh, go and do a striptease for the for the, one of the guys in the common room. I was like, all right. So I went over and I'd done a striptease, was taking my like tie off, my shirt off. And one of the headmasters walked in and I was in a Catholic school now. Like we done mass every week. Um, every week it was like very strict. And he walked in and he was like, Letitia. And I was like, oh. And he was like, get into my room now. So I was like, fuck. So I went into the room and I remember um, my mum got called up and she was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know what's, what's, what's wrong. And she, and um, they were just like, we're expelling her. But it was a buildup of things. It wasn't just that. I think that was just the icing on the on the cake. I feel like I was just obviously very rebellious, always cheeky. And it, it's so bad now to look back at it. Like I would never want my child to be like that. But like I said, I feel like I just rebelled in school. I don't know why. I should have done the opposite, but I didn't. And I remember, um, yeah, I got expelled and my mum battered me the whole way home from school. It took us about 
20 minutes to walk back home. She was like, you fucking stupid bitch. What are you going to do now? She was like, you need to go and get um, a job. You're not laying on the sofa all day. So I was like, oh God. So I didn't know what to do. And I remember I applied to go to the army, but I got rejected. Um, Why? I don't know. They just rejected me. Can you imagine <laughs> me in the army though? <laughs> um, yeah. So then what I end up doing then? I end up doing um, an apprenticeship. I done a hairdresser. No, sorry. A beauty apprenticeship. My mum was like, to be fair to my mum, she never, she's never let us just like sit there and not do anything. Like I've been working like since the age of 13. I remember I worked in a fish and chip shop and yeah, I was, I was just like serving chips and fish and stuff. And I remember all the popular boys used to come. I used to run out the back and they used to be like, Letitia, you need to, and I was like, I used to, oh, I can't even speak. I used to be like, yeah, 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 I'll be there now. And I used to take my time because I used to be so ashamed and I used to come home smelling of grease. And I only used to get like 10 pound a shift, I think, but I've always been a grafter. Like I've always, always had to work for my money because my mum didn't have any growing up. Do you know what I mean? And all my friends, their parents were all well off. So they always had shit. So the only way I could do it was by grafting, I guess. Yeah. When did the MTV Valleys come then when you were 18? How did um, that come yeah, about? Yeah, I was 18. Oh, it's such a weird story. So I took my brother um, to have his hair cut. My friend had a salon in Patolba town. It's like a really small town. And I was there and they were like, um, my friend was like, oh, Tish, someone's just been in here saying, um, do we know anyone that'd be good on a Welsh reality TV show? She was like, everyone in the shop turned around and was like, Letitia. And I was like, really? I was like, oh, that's mad. So she gave me a leaflet. No, they all give my number. And she gave me a leaflet and I was looking at it and it was like, do you want to come become the next Welsh superstar or something like that? And I was thinking, oh, that's right on my street. Um, and at the time I was working in um, an energy company. I told everyone I was an accountant, but I was just basically copying. <laughs> I was doing um, the admin and I'd have to cop like copy, um, what's it called? Postcodes onto like a different sheet. It was such a shit and boring job. And I remember, right, it's so weird before all this happened. I, I always knew that I was going to be someone. Like, even when I was younger, like, I used to dance in front of the TV and watch MTV. And, like, I was obsessed with just dancing, singing, acting. I loved it. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I remember I was sitting in front of my desk and I was doing my job. And I looked out the window. I went, <laughs> I went, this is not for me. I was like, I'm going to be famous. And I remember telling myself that. And it's, it's crazy. And I think a few weeks after I said that, that happened. So anyway, they called me and I was in work and I went into the work toilet. So they were like, oh, hi, you Letitia. Like so many people have given your number, blah, blah, blah. And they were just like, like, what do you, what are you like as a person? I was like, oh, I'm fucking nuts. I was like, I love getting on it. I was, I was like, I love going out clubbing. I was like, I've got a boyfriend, but I was like, I cheat him all the time. <laughs> like I was, <laughs> I, I was so bad. I was a savage. Um, and I remember they were like, right, we love you. Can you come up tomorrow? And I, and I was like, I was thinking, fuck, I've got 10 pound in my bank account. And it was in Cardiff. And that's like, I think like four, no, 45 minutes from where I lived. And I was thinking, shit, do I risk spending my last 10 pound to go into this interview? And like, I might not even get it. Do you know what I mean? But I thought, I was like, yeah, do you know what? Yeah, I'll come, I'll come. So I remember I put on like a gold dress um, and I had like a fur coat on and I had like bleach blonde hair then. It was disgusting. You've probably seen if you've Googled me. And um, did I say red lipstick? I put red lipstick on. Anyway, I drove up, I filled my tank with my last 10 pounds and I went there. And I remember um, they, they would keep me waiting for ages. And I was like, again, so fucking pissed off. I was like, it was like in Cardiff on like this, um, on the like strip where all the clubs are. I was sitting at some bar with like a chaperone and I went, and then they went, oh, we're ready for you. So I was like, okay, cool. So I walked over and it was like the head of MTV, um, the head of True North Productions who made the valleys and um, two other people from, from MTV, I think. And I walked in, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. I was like, why have you kept me so long? I said, my hair's gone so fucking frizzy. And I sat down like that. They just burst out laughing. I was thinking, what the hell? They said from that moment, they knew that I was the one that it, like, I think they picked, I think they interviewed like 3,000 people or something like that. But I was one of the first interviews. They were like, she's got it. Like, and it's mad. Like, I miss that Letitia. Like, I just didn't give a fuck. Yeah, but do you miss that Letitia? That's it's, the, that's the class clown Letitia. That's the yeah. one who had done a lot of bad stuff to get the, the wrong attention. Yeah. Now you're at that stage. Now you're making a transition where you're seeing the world Do you know what I miss? I miss not giving a fuck. I miss... But you did give a fuck. That was just a barrier. That was a mask. Yeah. That was a mask. Then when that mask clips, you realise, like, 
how would you feel if your daughter was to act like that? Oh, I'd hate it, actually. Do you know what I yeah. mean? So yeah, you, I feel like I am a completely different person now, yeah. but I wouldn't mind a little bit of that Leticia uh, yeah, Valley's in me. Yeah, zero fucks given, of course. Yeah. But there's always fucks given. Yeah. I always say I couldn't give a fuck, but deep down, I always do. Yeah. I'm a sensitive bastard. Like, mm. I, I, I feel people's pains. I'm an empath. Like, I feel people's sensitivities. And, yeah. And I, and I see people, and it hurts me to see people weak. So when you people ask think who are strong like we spoke earlier and you say, Oh, they look happy, but is anybody really truly that happy? No, I don't think they are. Like no. I said to you earlier, I was like I just feel like you people think, Oh, you got money, you got a nice life, you, you you're bound to be happy. But it, there's so much more to it than that, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think I've met anyone that's like truly happy. Yeah. I don't think. I think it's an illusion that you can be happy for short little short bursts at a time like yeah. after exercise or doing something good or you've booked a holiday or you've got a new house that lasts for a couple hours an hour and then it goes yeah. and then you start thinking about the past again like when I'm happy sometimes I don't feel as if I deserve to be happy yeah. and then I make myself fucking sad <laughs> it's fucked up but <laughs> When you, when, so when you go into the valleys, did you think, okay, my life's complete, I'm, that's me, I've made it, I'm, I'm no. going to feel happy? I am, um, it's mad, like, and at the time, like, it's so bad, I was still with that guy, you know, the the one I got with when I was 14, but, like, our relationship was just, it was, it was rocky anyway, do you know what I mean? It was coming to an end, but we kind of, like, was like, do you know what, we'll stick together, and, um... No, I didn't think I completely made it. I went into this not knowing what the fuck was going to happen. I didn't even watch TV at, the, at that point. Like, they were like, oh, it's going to be like Geordie show or Jersey show. And I remember them giving us a disc to watch and I didn't even watch it. Um, so I just went into it, like, just just full on, like... Winging it. Yeah, winging it. Yeah. And I didn't expect it to take off the way it took off at what all. What was that like for you then? Getting thrown into the limelight? Right. So the first... Did that spiral you? Do you know was? what? Yeah, like... And remember, I went in there. This is why I look so fucked on the f- on the first um, season because remember I was doing drugs. I was on benders and stuff, and it drains you, doesn't it? Like you just don't look like like you. And um, yeah, I went in there. I was drinking every single day for like I think I was in there two months, six weeks. I can't remember. So I just looked absolutely disgusting. Um, and I. I oh, I don't know, it was just a bit mad. I remember, do you know what? It was such an, an amazing experience. Like, I'm so glad I'd done it. But like, when I when I come out of it, I had the worst end of it. Because I went in there, like, I feel like they they forced the bad, like, the bad character on me kind of thing. Like, I was the bitch. I was the, I was the rowdy, do you know, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm not, like, I'm mm-hmm. li- literally the least bitchiest person you probably ever meet. Like, if I've got to say something, I'll tell you to your face kind of thing. Um, so I think, like, I had the bad character. So when when the first series launched, oh, my God, James, I had so many death threats, you wouldn't believe. I didn't leave my house for, like, a month. Like, it was bad. Like, it was really, really bad. And then all the other... Um, People off the valleys were literally loving life, doing PAs, making loads of money. I was fucking skint. I literally come come out there thinking, oh, I'm going to make some money. I was the skintest I'd ever been. I was so skint. Do you think these production companies use kids? Do you know what? I feel... I feel like, yeah, a bit. I feel like definitely back in the day, but I feel like it's different now. I feel like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of protocols and everything Mm. to go through, isn't it? And I feel like I was definitely naive. I I was, I would just do anything that the producers told me to do. Were they happy to let you do anything? Yeah, I would do, I would, I would just do anything. I I just didn't give a fuck. It was only fucking 18. Yeah, I was 18. I mean, like. And I had like fame just dangling there for me. Do you know what I mean? So. Mm Yeah, I just, when I watch back the first series now, I just don't feel like that's me uh, at all. You see the kids going on Love Island and you see them coming out and committing suicide because nobody, like, back in the day, if you've got a tribe like 200, 300 years ago, there's only maybe 20, 30 people in that tribe. Yeah. So you don't really feel as much hate. Yeah. But nowadays, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody wants social media. Even social media is all bullshit. Everybody's yeah. competing against each other's likes. Yeah. More likes. Like, I'll put a post down if I don't get a certain amount of views. I likes. I'm thinking, oh, nobody loves me anymore. That's how fast the fucking it's, it's, mind It's mad though, isn't it? You. So when these mm. people are getting in and thinking, okay, I'm going to get in there, make a few million, I'm going to become famous, I can do what I want. 
don't realise and it takes you 10 steps back yeah. because it's a darkness. It's everybody's opinion. Or do, do I really look like that? Is that the way people think of me? Mm. Then you start doubting yourself and then the hatred kicks in, then the self-loathing, then the suicidal thoughts. Yeah. And that's when people end up taking their own life. 100%. I feel like anyone that's, that even thinks of doing TV, you've got to be very thick-skinned. Very, very, very thick-skinned because yeah. it's, a, it's a harsh world. I swear to God. Like, like I said, before I went on the valleys, I didn't have insecurities. I knew... I wasn't the best looking girl, do you know what I mean? But I, I, I felt confident. And then after the first series, that had gone. Yeah, People, was suicidal again? Yeah, suicidal. I felt insecure. I'd, like, honestly, people... I feel like I got the worst end of it. Like people are like, oh my God, look at her fucking teeth. You can grate cheese with her teeth. You can fucking chew through barbed wire. Horrible te- but Yeah, <laughs> twats. Yeah, like bastards, honestly, yeah. like it was bad. Mm-hmm. And everyone in, in my hometown hated me as well because I went on there. I was like, yeah, I'm from Poor Toilet and it's fucking full of skip rats. But <laughs> I was just saying anything and everything to get myself yeah. on the show. Do you know what yeah, I mean? I, yeah, love, yeah. I love where it's I'm from. It's entertainment as well. Yeah. Like people who are on uh, Jordy Sh- Shore, Jordy's hate that eh, on the way is Essex. People in Essex yeah. hate it. Like. We had fucking, um, what's it called when people protest to get the show off? They were like, you're making a and bad Wales. example of Wales. Like it was it was big <laughs> thing in Wales. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I was like, we're not really making a bad example. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? This is how kids act. We get go out, we get fucked off our face and we just live live our life. Do you know what I mean? Like this is what your kids are doing, but it's just not being tele- like it's not being on TV and kind of thing. how long did that last two years? So I think it was like a three years, I think. So I stopped filming when I was like 20. The last series was when I was 21. What was that like for you? Did you have other things? In it the was pipeline? bad because I just thought this was going to go on for ages. Do you know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't plan ahead. Were you getting paid for it? So yeah. So the first series, I got eight hundred pound. I think that's fucking eight hundred pound. Yeah. To go and through like, that pain and torment. Yeah, and... it's mad. And I mem- I remember coming out like bro- like broke, absolutely broke. And I remember I had a car on finance at the time. This is like ten years ago now. I couldn't afford my payments. My car got taken from me. I've never even said this to anyone. I don't think any of my friends know this, but I couldn't afford to keep my fucking car. Like how mad is that? So my car got taken away from me. Um, like I said, all my all my other um, TV mates, they were all getting PAs and everything. But because I was the most hated, and I think because I was black, I don't feel like I was getting work like them. Do you know what I mean? So um, it was it was hard. I can't lie. Do you really, think there was a lot of racism. Oh. Feel Hell a of a lot. That. Yeah. What's that? Oh God, yeah. And I was like, it was only me and Leroy. So Leroy's mixed race as well. And yeah, the racism was bad. Like on Twitter, it was honestly, it was bad. Were you good friends, the cast? Yeah, I, I made some good friends. I'm still friends with like Carly now. She's gone on to have a baby and Natalie. Um, but the others, I wouldn't say, I didn't stay in touch with them. But at the time, I was friends with like one or two of them. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you do after the Valleys then? So I remember the second series. So the second series we filmed, I fe- feel like I was more myself then. And I started like creating like a fan base. Do you know what I mean? People started like liking me because I was myself. Um, and they could see I was just like, just a normal girl. Um, and then the third series. So the second series, we got paid £8,000, I think, for that. And then the third series, I think I got like 16000 I think I got paid more than everyone else. It's still not good. Do you know what I mean? But at the time I was skint and I was like, mm-hmm. I felt like it was a lot of money. And I remember it was a good series. Loved it. Like I really enjoy doing the valleys. Like it's, it's not every day you could say I lived my fucking best life from the age of yeah. 18 to 21. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was like we was in uni, but like it was being filmed kind of thing. Um, but I remember we didn't get a fourth season and I swear to God, I cried for days. Cause I was thinking, I didn't have a backup plan. I was only 21. I didn't think that far ahead. I didn't save my money. I, I was just stupid with it. Do you know what I mean? Going out partying every weekend. And I remember they told us, right, there's not going to be another season. And I remember all of us was devastated. Like it was bad the way it was done to be fair, because it was just like, we thought we was going to go and, um, go and film season four. It was all planned and everything. And last minute it just got pulled from us what kind of views were you getting on MTV um oh, a lot of views millions um I don't know about millions but there was a lot of views and now yeah. I know they regret it because they said they they, they punched themselves about it because they were like it was such a good rating show and I think X and the Beach actually came out, out around the third season and I think they wanted to focus more on that that's why it got pulled 
But um, would you do it again if it popped up? Well, the valleys. Yeah. yeah so there was meant to be a reunion. Ten years. Last reunion. year, or the year before, and I filmed like the backstory for it and everything, and. Again, it got pulled, mm -hmm. but I would do it 100% because it'd be so nice to see. Everyone's in a different kind of... Um, Matured a bit. Yeah, everyone's mature now. They've got kids, they've got babies, they engage. Do you know what I mean? It's like one of them's a lawyer, Jenna's a lawyer now. So it'd be so cool to just like, mm -hmm. just catch up with everyone. But it obviously wouldn't be as crazy yeah. because I that can't... That life, man, like you've got to take your hat off to anybody who tries. Yeah. Especially in the reality game. Like it's, you've got to have a, a big set of fucking balls because... Yeah. You're going in, you're putting yourself in the firing line to yeah. be hated. Mm. Now a lot of people hate their jobs, they hate their lives. Yeah. So if they see people having fun and they see people try to make something in their life, people fucking hate that. They do. They, they yeah. do hate it. And it's, yeah. People are bastards. Like, but there's a lot of goodness out there. There's a lot of good people. But anybody that does these reality shows, you have got to take your hat off to them because no matter how successful you are in these shows, you're going to get hate. Yeah. But 100%. people still watch. Yeah. It's just exactly. to learn to understand that it is only words, but. All human beings, we feel those words. We feel that. Like, yeah. why do they hate on me? What is it I've really done for them to do that? And, it, and that it can be difficult. So after that get cancelled, what happened with your life then? I remember I was living at, in Cardiff at the time. Um, literally having the time of my life. Still like, partying. Literally partying all the time. Um, and I lived with one of my friends, um, Garvin. I had to think of his name then. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we literally had such a laugh. Like literally we were out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like it was, it was, it was mm -hmm. mad. And I remember the show got pulled and I was thinking, fuck, what the fuck am I going to do? So my only source of income at the time, because I had Instagram, but there was no like posting and shit like um, collabs and shit like that. It was, that wasn't a thing back then. I wish it was because I would have made so much more money, but it wasn't. So I was thinking, fuck, I'm not going to have any more PAs. I'm not going to get paid from the show. What the fuck am I going to do? So I was like, I, I don't know what to do. And I had a friend at the time and she was like dancing, like doing, um, she was like a stripper in, in Cardiff earning so much money. And she was like, oh, Tish, I'm going to Miami. Like, why didn't you come with me? Like, we could dance out there. And I was just like, oh, I don't know. Like, I couldn't dance. And I was just like, oh, I don't know. And she was like, come on, like, there's nothing else you could do. And I remember I had a, a bit of savings left. So I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to go to Miami and just go over there. Because I couldn't go to a normal job. How can I go from being in the valleys, literally steaming off my face and every single episode, kissing people like... Oh, can I just put it out there as well? I never had sex in it. Everyone used to, be, everyone used to say, oh, you're such a whore, you had sex on TV. I've never once had sex on TV. But like... The show was mad. It wasn't PG, do you know what I mean? It was it was extreme. So I was like, how can I go from that to just go into a normal job? No one's going to employ me. Not one single person. They're going to laugh at me if I walk in for an interview. So I was like, fuck. Um, and also like my ego. I didn't want to go back to a normal job. I was just like, I just felt like on a high, do you know what I mean? Like I, I just didn't want to go back to that kind of thing. So... I went to Miami. I don't know if I'm going to completely keep this in there because I don't think man, no one really knows about this. Um, and my friend was just like, um, yeah, let's go dance out there. So I was like, oh shit, okay. So I remember like Googling like how to, <laughs> I'm dead, how to strip dance and shit like that. Like, And I was watching YouTube videos, yeah. right? And um, there was just some some girls in just some mad outfits. I remember watching one, one video and um, they were climbing up a pole and then there was a girl at the pole and she was shaking the pole like that. So I was like, right, okay, I'm going to have to like remember that one. And I remember we got there and we auditioned for this club called Eleven in Miami. And it was like basically like... Um, it wasn't like a ratchet club, do you know what I mean? It was all like very pretty girls there, very rich people go there. And I remember um, I auditioned and I remember I had to get in one of these podiums. I was I, I couldn't dance gyms, I still can't dance now. So I was just like, like that. And, and I was only 21, you know, just like dancing. They were like, right, you got the job. So I was like, fuck. So I'm basically working in Miami, Stripper. being Ill illegal, like you're not meant to work there. Mm. And um, yeah, so I think I worked probably like four times, I couldn't do it. How much did you make? Oh, fuck all. <laughs> I made no money, like honestly. I think one night I earned like a thousand pounds, not a thousand dollars. I must have made about two thousand dollars the whole time I was there. And all, and then I blew all my savings club in. And I remember, um, I told you about that pole dance thing because I, I want to tell you this story. So I remember there was three stages, right? There was one stage where it's like at the back, no one really sees you. The second stage, you're in the middle and um, 
like people see you and then the third stage is where like all the NBA players are and like they're throwing money and stuff for you and you, you're on the, you've got like a big pole there so I was like right okay I said to my friend you climb up because I couldn't fucking climb the pole and I was like and I'll shake it so she's like all right okay cool so she, we go to the um podium she climbs up and I start shaking the pole like this all of a sudden like about 20 security guards run up on the on the stage they drag us off they're like what are you doing what are you doing is not um secure to the wall you're not meant to move the pole and I was I I, I remember thinking, fuck this, I can't do this. Like literally NBA players, rappers, like I see them all. They all seen it happen. I was just like so shamed, but stripping wasn't for me. Like I'd like to think <laughs> it was. I thought, oh, I'd be so good at getting money out of men and stuff, but I couldn't take it. I'm used, I was used to just men coming up to me, like trying to win me over. Do you know what I mean? I fucking hated going up to men, trying to make them feel good and make and try and get money out of them. I felt disgusting. Feels so sleazy. I was like, yeah. I was like, nah. How this, long were you in Miami for? I was, I stayed in Miami for four months. I was meant to stay, I was meant to stay out there for like a year, I think, but I couldn't hack it, James, in the end. Yeah, no, sorry. No, you've oh. got uh, Amy Arcan in the book. Say oh. that he was trying to shag your pal at the, the toilet or something. Yeah, yeah. We met him. Um, Did he ever reach out when you put him in his book, your book? Nah. And do you know why I regret putting him in the book? At the time I had management and I was like, I told him about the story. I was like, oh my God, fucking, we were out. And Amu can, I'm, I'm out, I say, Amu can. Yeah. <laughs> Amu can come up to us wherever. And he was really nice. And then we went, we lived um, basically like right next to the club, like a street over from the club. And we were walking and he was just following us. We were like, what are you doing? And he was like, come on, come on. Like, let me come in. Like, I'll, I'll give you money. And we were like, no, like, I'm not a fucking prostitute. Do you know what I mean? I think he offered us like 2000 $2,000, 2,000 pounds. And I remember telling my agent about it at the time and he was like, oh, amazing, let's put it in your book. And I was just like, oh, like, a, do you know what I mean? I don't really want to put it in my book because I, I'm, I i don't know, I regret it now. But yeah, it, that, that happened though. But it's just it's trying to get headlines for the book, innit? Like, That's what it was. They don't yeah. try and sue or anything. I'll try and fucking How do can you sue? It happened. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, you can't sue me for the yeah. truth. But um. It's mad because I was watching him and his wife on TikTok the other day and they seem really happy and stuff. And I feel like he's changed because I think he was a bit of a creep back in the day, innit? But, um, you tend to see, man, a lot of these fucking sports stars are quite yeah, creepy, man. Like, yeah, they I are. I think a lot of people bow down to them. Like, you see this shit with Ryan Giggs. I had his brother on Rodri and yeah. he was shagging his wife for eight years. His brother? What? His brother? Yeah, shagging his brother's wife for eight years and while she was pregnant. Fuck off. Yeah, six months pregnant. Oh my God, do they just, speak? No, not now, but it's Roger's a good guy, man. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, Ryan Giggs. So I think just people, you don't know people's stories. People are young as well. You've been young, I've been young. Yeah. Like, would you utilise it to your advantage if you're a fucking womaniser? Of course you would. Yeah. But you would have done 100%. it for attention. You were doing it all yeah. for fucking stripping and whatever you could get off men. And yeah. guys do the same. Like, people make mistakes. It was 10 years ago. And yeah, 100%. It's just everybody's fucking majority of cunts are perverts but <laughs> I know it's true but um what yeah. did you do when you came back from Miami so I remember I left Miami because I just got depressed there I just feel like it was because I'm like a country girl like it was so weird for me to be there because like it was just like everyone you meet wanted to be someone so you'd be like oh hi nice to meet you yeah I'm an artist or I'm a model or I'm it was just it was like I was living in La La Land and it didn't seem like real world? do you know what I mean and it's I was fake. like fake so fake mm -hmm. and I remember I went back to my I was sharing an apartment right with there, there was four of us in a studio apartment so there's four of us girls sharing one bed like we were oh I was so skinned like honestly I had no money I remember I had to ask my friend to buy me a subway like that's how bad it went mm -hmm. like it was bad um and I remember just coming back one day and I was just I just broke down I was just crying and I was like I was like, I just don't want to be you. I was like, I'm just not happy. And I was with um, my daughter's dad at the time when I was out there. And he was just like, just come home kind of thing. Well, we were like, kind of together, kind of not kind of thing. Oh, so he know? wasn't, he was back home here and you were He was Miami. back home, yeah. Yeah, with the fucking yeah. part with that, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so it's really weird. Like I got back and um, I was with Winter's dad wherever. Mm -hmm. I literally got pregnant the, the same week I was back or this, the same month. I got pregnant instantly. It was, it was mad. And I remember thinking, like, I felt like it was God's way of, like, saving me. Like, I felt like... Yeah, at crossroads. Mm hmm Yeah, at crossroads. Yeah, because I was just, I was just, I didn't know what to do with my life. I was unhappy. I was just, like, I hated, like, Miami. And I was just like, what the fuck? And then when I got pregnant, I was like, shit, like, this is God saving me. So, yeah, that's why I ended up um, 
obviously having winter because everyone around me was like get rid of it she's gonna uh, ruin your career this and that and I was like no like something in me was just saying like just to keep to keep my baby so mm-hmm. yeah is that the kind of turning point in your life 100 percent, god like mass like parenthood has changed me like I feel like a completely different person to that person it's mad does it the cringe looking back at the shit you've done. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Like, uh, I just used to be a bit wild. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So did everyone know. Like, yeah. yeah. You can't beat yourself up for being. But do you know the valleys? Child. Like, yeah. everyone always says to me, do you regret it? And my answer is no. I feel like if I didn't do the valleys, I don't feel like I'd be where I am today. Do you know what I mean? Of course, like, man. Yeah, obviously it's going to be a bit yeah. awkward when uh-huh. Winter watches it when she's 18. But <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, that, that's my story. Mm-hmm. You done it? Was it Million Dollar Baby? Yeah. You went on Piers Morgan, but they kind of gave you a rough ride for that. Why do you think yeah. that is? I just think P- Piers Morgan is a prick and I'm just like a young mixed race girl going on there just saying, oh yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like he didn't understand where I was coming from. The reason I'd done the show was because one, MTV come to me with it and we're like, right, we want to do a show with you and your daughter. And two, like, it's a chance to earn money for my daughter's future. Who the fuck's going to turn that away? And like, I wasn't doing anything different to what fucking Victoria Beckham and and all these other celebs do with their kids. They're on front page of Burberry or on runways and stuff and they make money from their, their kids. So I didn't understand why I got so much shit because at the end of the day, like it was in... I was just doing it in my daughter's interest. Do you know what I mean? Like that money that I made from that show is still sitting in the bank account. Like that's for her future. So. And they made you feel bad for it? Yeah. As if you're doing something wrong? Yeah. He, oh, he was horrible to me. I felt so awkward going on the show. I didn't even want to do it, you know, but obviously it was press for the show. So I was like, all right, okay, wherever. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm smart, but I'm not academically smart. Like I can't speak properly. So like, I just knew me going on there, they're just going to, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like get, have their way with their words and stuff. Yeah, just put you under but, um, pressure. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to get my point across because I just knew he was going to go in, go in yeah. for me. Yeah. What about for the Million Dollar Baby? How did that show go? Um, oh, can't lie. It's one of the hardest films, things I've ever filmed. Why is that? So like, do you know like The Valleys and Big Brother and all the other shows I've done? Like yeah. there's, there's a cast, there's mm-hmm. loads of you. But Winter was two years older this time and it was just me and Winter. So like, can you imagine the stress? I was filming five days a week and it was just like, they couldn't go off and film like a family member or someone like that. Cause the show was based on me and Winter. So it was, it was a lot, a lot of hours. It was hard work um, and juggling a baby as well. It was, it was, it was hard, but I'm so grateful that MTV gave me the chance to like have my own show. Not many people can say that, um, but it was hard. What was Big Brother like? Oh, Big Brother was one of the best experiences of my life. Yeah, because like I watched that when I was 11 years old. Like I loved it. Like I remember just just watching it constantly. It was on Channel 5 or Channel 4, I can't remember. Um, So I always, always, always wanted to do Big Brother. And I remember um, at the time, I just had winter and I moved to Wales and I was like living in like a council flat, had no money or whatever. And I was doing like a uni course and... I had no TV work, nothing like that. No money coming in for social media because that wasn't about. And I remember my agent rings me and he's like, Tisha. And I was like, yeah. It was on my birthday. It was the 25th of November. And he was like, big brother, want you to do their show. And I remember just breaking down and crying, screaming, crying. I was like, no, no, no. I was like, you serious? And they were like, yeah. They, he was like, it's not a celeb one though. It's a normal one. So I was thinking, okay, wherever. Um, and... Oh, do you know I'm so thankful for for Big Brother because I was in a bad place like like I told you financially and everything I like I was scrimping and saving like and and, and I I felt like a failure because I had a daughter and obviously I just wanted to give her the best life I could and I felt like I wasn't doing that do you know what I mean so I was like I needed I remember I, I remember manifesting before this happened actually have you ever read the book called Secret yeah yeah yeah, yeah. love attraction yeah and I read that and I remember writing in my notes right I want to move to London. Um, and at the time I had like hundred pound in my bank. Okay. Um, I want to save 20,000 pounds. I want to drive a Range Rover. Um, and I want to like get back, to, get back on TV kind of thing. And then the week later that happens, I have that phone call. It was fucking mad. So I remember, um, just like, right, I'm going to do it. I think they only paid like a thousand pounds, but it was hard for me because winter was nine months old at the time. And obviously it was just like me and her, we lived together, but I thought, in order to get to where you want, you have to sometimes like 
um, sacrifice. make sacrifice things, make hard decisions. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, do you, I was, I'm in an R in about it. You, and, but I, then I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go on the show. I'm going to fucking win it, and I'm going to make a life for me, for me, and my daughter. Um, I was one of the hardest things though, at leaving her. So I remember I'd done the show. Um, literally, it couldn't have gone any better for me. I did get voted out. Um, not by the public, but by um, someone in the house, because he seen me as a threat. He just knew I was going to win it. I was the favourite to win um, in the bookies and everything. Um, yeah, and I remember just leaving there and boom, like the money started coming in. Like I was getting um, social media posts. I was getting interviews. Like I was, I started, I earned a lot of money after that. It was crazy. And I remember like a month after coming out, I looked at my notes and everything that I put in my notes, I had accomplished. So I moved, I ended up moving to London. I remember thinking, cause at the time I was living in um, a council flat, I was paying like 300 pound rent a month. And in London, you can't get anywhere cheap. It was like, I think my rent where I moved was 1,250 pound. I was thinking, how the fuck am I gonna afford every month to pay 1,250 pound? But I thought, do you know what? Let me just move up, I'll, I'll fucking, I'll manage it, do you know what I mean? And like I said, money started coming in. And then I remember like two months, three months probably after the show, I looked at my notes and everything I put in my notes that I was manifesting, I I accomplished. Yeah. It was it, it was mad. From going from being completely skint, living in a council flat, to living in London, driving the car I wanted, having that in my savings. And um, obviously I was getting loads of work. Yeah, so manifestation is very powerful. It's so powerful. Yeah, you are what you're thinking. People, that's where you can change your mindset, change yeah. the way you see the world, and the, the change the way you look at things, and the things you look at change. Like hundred percent, you can change your outgoings. You can change life. It's not just a case of writing it down. Though you've you've like you could you've wrote that down, but you've still took the leap to go on to Big Brother. Yeah, knowing the fact that when you've done the valleys, the hate that comes with it, all the, the yeah. bullshit. So Which, knowing that you're going to put yourself in the firing lane again, it can stop people from going, I don't want to do that again. Yeah, 100%. So you, you took the leap and done it, which is I good. Did. Your ass, what was the script when you fucking bent over and your ass popped out oh, or something? Yeah, was that yeah. the firing? So um, I didn't have um, a, <laughs> a, a proper eviction, okay? So I only had done bit in the side because I was evicted in like one of the games. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have an eviction. And they were like, oh, Leticia, come on, bit in the side. So when I was in there, I was constantly fucking eating because I was so bored. So I was just eating like mayo and chicken sandwiches <laughs> every day. Do you know what I mean? I was like, eating, 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 drinking every night. Um, and I remember uh, I come out and I tried on this dress and it was size 10 and I thought it's a bit tight and I wasn't going to wear any knickers, right? But I thought, I thought let me just put, I, it was like a pink thong and I put it on. And then I went on the show and I remember Winter was in the crowd with her father at the time. And um, in, the, in the house, I used to twerk all the time. And do you know one thing I love about Big Brother? I think I'm glad I'd done it because none of it's like edited, like it's, you can't there's no producers telling you how to act or what to do I was completely and utterly myself and I think that's when people just started to like see the real me do you know what I mean so big brother done me a world of good I can't lie so anyway on big brother bit in the side um Rylan was like oh like show us a twerk because I was always twerking in the house so I stood up and I just went you go like this and you went but and then I just seen everyone laughing and I felt like, like a gust of air and I was like, what the fuck? And then I realised my fucking skirt <laughs> popped. I was like, no! Like, honestly, do you know, like when you just want the ground to swallow you up, that's why I wanted it to happen to me. I was so shamed. Mm -hmm. And I sat, I remember just sitting down and thinking, fuck, like, oh my God, like I was so shamed. <laughs> um, and I remember everyone tweeting like, oh, she set, she set it up. It was fake. No, it wasn't. I just put on fucking loads of weight. Do you know what I mean? And <laughs> my dress just went up. That went fucking viral. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. I remember I had friends traveling like, in like Peru or something. The Peruvian kids were watching it on their phone, just like watching over, laughing, mm -hmm. laughing, laughing. Um, it was mad. Yeah. It was crazy to come out, to get evicted like by a housemate. And obviously I didn't get a proper eviction and everything. And for that to happen, felt like it was like, a, obviously it was embarrassing, but it was a blessing in disguise. That took my career as well from from there to there. It was, it was crazy. Isn't it mad those things that, are, yeah. that, it's the ones that's most unexpected that can change your life for yeah. the better. It's, it's all about, it's try, try, try to create a platform for yourself and create a, bla a, a brand to then feed your daughter, which is the main yeah. objective. you done X in the Beach as well. What was that like? Oh, that was such a good experience. Um, when, when was that last year or the year before? I loved it. It was so good. I'd never done like a dating show or ever. So when they come to me with it, I was just like, hmm. I was like, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it was a laugh. Just had a laugh, just drinking all the time. Obviously, I had a bit of a romance. <laughs> How do you get on with the, the booze now? I don't drink. Do you I not? No, I, do you know what? Since the Valleys days, like, because yeah. 
imagine drinking every day, right? So we'd wake up at eight o'clock in the morning. We'd have to get up at eight o'clock in the morning. We'd get ready. We'd be out filming all day. We'd get back at six o'clock. Then we'd have to get ready to go out. So then we'd pre-drink. Then we'd drink all, um, we'd drink obviously on the night out. We'd come back. We'd drink all night. And then we'd go sleep at like four, three in the morning. So we'd have like three hours sleep a day, right? It turned me off drink. Like, and drugs. I haven't touched drugs. Fuck. Since... Since I was like 19, I think, before winter. Like, drugs are just not for me at all. I'm glad I experienced all that when I was younger because it's just like, yeah. it doesn't appeal to me at all anymore. Yeah, and drinking, yeah. I barely drink. If I if I go out and have food, I don't think, no, I don't really drink. What I don't drink like anymore. What do you like on the booze now? Um, if you did have a drink, I'm trying to think the last, I don't. More calmer? Much more calmer. Like, I got a cutoff point, and I know where my cutoff point is. Do you know, like, some people just get levered and they're all mm. around the floor and stuff? I never get like that because I, I just know how to handle it. I just know my, my cutoff point. But I, I barely drink anymore. I just. How's your relationship with Winter's dad? Um, It's okay. Like, he's an amazing dad, like, really good dad with Winter. Um, but I, I wouldn't say, like, we're just civil with each other. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think that's the way it should be. So we co-parent. He has a, a week. I have a week. So the week I don't have a, like, I get to do things like this and um, to get all my posts completed and stuff. So that's good, co-parenting. It's hard uh, at the same time. Do you know what I mean? But, like, I've got to be fair. Yeah, you've got to work with each other, man. Yeah. It's, it's not a kid's fault in any way, yeah. shape or form. It's to be the best parents possible which yeah. is and if you can have a good relationship it makes things even just having a civil relationship makes yeah. things better what do you think looking back at your relationships and that um on my previous relationships yeah. i think i don't know i just don't feel like i feel like I've, i my past relationships it's just been how can i explain it like the one when I was 14 to 19. No, that's a fucking weird one. Yeah, that was that was just a weird time in my life. I feel like I just, that was just a comfort thing for me. Do you know what I mean? Like, and then with Winter's dad, I felt like I was just young when I got with him as well. We got, I got with him when I was 20, 21, 22, no, 21, I think. I was 21. And I just feel like I was in a weird point in my life. And I felt like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. I just don't think we were meant for each other. We were never meant for each other. We we like chalk and cheese, me and him. But at the end of the day, we've had a beautiful child. That's come out of it. But it was it was it was a hard breaking up because I've always because I didn't have that family unit yeah. growing up. I wanted to give my daughter that. You know what I mean? So I think I was staying for the wrong reasons when I was with him because mm -hmm. um, we just didn't we didn't get along. Like we really didn't get along. Like and now I see that now I'm in a new relationship. I've been with my boyfriend nearly two years now. Like. I see the difference, do you know what I mean? I know, like, I don't feel like I was in love when I was with my child's father, if that makes sense. But mm -hmm. like, now I know what love is. How does he handle it, your man, the, the tension and the stuff that you've done in the past? Is he um, okay with it? Yeah, do you know what? Like he, you, I think me and him get along so well and we're in like a, such a good place because we've experienced similar things like in our childhood and stuff like that. So we connect on a whole different level. Mm. It's like mad, like with, my child's father, we didn't really have that connection. Do you know what I mean? But he's cool with it. Like he, um, he doesn't get jealous. Like he's really like laid back. Um, but yeah, he knows I've been wild and stuff <laughs> on the valleys. He's seen it all, but he just loves me and accepts me yeah, for who a, I am. That's a good I mean? man. Then what yeah. about when you were, when you start to get in fame and getting attention? How do you know who's right and who's wrong? Like the people then you want don't. people just want you for because of what you're doing as well, where you can't really trust anyone. Yeah, I feel like that's been the case with a lot of people. Hmm. Not even just relationships, I feel like friends as well. I feel like there's, I feel like when when you're known, I feel like everyone just wants to be your friend just for that fact, you know what I mean, simple fact. So that's why I've always kept my day one friends that I've grown up with, like my friends and they, I'm so close to them, do you know what I mean? But. I've had friends come in and out of my life and I just feel like, I, I feel I generally feel like a lot of people have used me to get to where they want to be. And it's sad because I, I wouldn't do that to someone. Yeah. But I don't know. And as you get older, you get more walked in you mm -hmm. and you realise a lot of things. Your book, how did that come about, especially at a young age, to do an autobiography? Um, I remember it was on the Valleys and I had an agent at the time and obviously he knew everything about my life. Like I just, because I was really close with him and he was like, Tish, he was like, you need to do an, um, an autobiography. And I was thinking, 
the fuck don't like old people do them and he was like no like <laughs> what you've been through is like crazy like some people like some people that are 60 haven't been through that kind of thing and I was just like oh okay and then that's how I ended up doing it you happy with that um how yeah. was your response good I had a yeah. good response but mm-hmm. me and my mum didn't speak for a while it's a hard for her yeah mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like she likes to push everything in the back of the back of her mind and act like nothing happened. But at the end of the day, it's my story. It's what happened to me. So if I want to speak on it or to help people, then I will. You going to get another book out? Maybe in the future, yeah, yeah. maybe. So plans for the future moving forward? Um, future moving forward. I want to, I'm in the middle of buying a house actually. Congratulations. Yeah. So I want to get more on the property large after this. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm done with TV. I don't feel like... I don't think you are. Don't you I think? I think if something pops up, you'll be fucking all over it. I don't know, you know. You will, man, I'm telling you. Do you reckon? Something else will pop up in the next, maybe this year, next year. Do you know what I'd love to do? What? I'm a celebrity, get me out of you. That's yeah. like one, Big Brother, and that was one of my things I've always wanted to do. So maybe that. Um, mm, trying to think what else. I want children, more children. Yeah. Like, I love being a mum. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's it, really. That's mm-hmm. all I can think of. What do you think looking back in your life so far? Um, looking back at my life, I just, it's mad. I feel like I've been through things that no kid should have ever been through. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I don't know, like I, 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 I get angry about it sometimes. Like I just, like I said to you before, like, I just feel like I've been through what I've been through to take me to where I am now. And that I need to be grateful for as well. Yeah. Cause I feel like if I had everything I wanted growing up and I didn't experience the things I experienced, I don't feel like I would have had the drive and determination to get me to like where I am now. Yeah. For anybody that's watching, it's maybe been through abuse, physical, mentally, sexually, it's maybe struggling, it feels abandoned. What advice would you give for them? Just don't give up and don't, don't let your past hold you back. Do you know what I mean? Like use it to motivate you and get you to where you want to be. Cause mm. It, like you you can get past it and like I'm not gonna say like I can't say like you're gonna forget it because I don't do you know what I mean there's days where like I'm really depressed and I think about everything that's happened but just keep pushing and just use that fucking pain and that trauma to drive you to where you need to be have you ever been to counselling now I went uh, to counselling once not feel the connection now um, not feel the connection do you know what I felt weird speaking to someone that like I didn't know about my problems mm. And I went and I was literally, I come out there hysterically crying. I, I, I'm, I, I like to like keep things close to my heart. Do you know what I mean? I don't really like to talk about things. This is why I never done an interview like this. But like lately, like I feel like you I'm change. in a point in my life where I'm changing, like mentally, physically. Like I feel like a new person lately. It's weird. I feel like lockdowns, like, although I went through a bad stage in lockdown, if, as, as did everyone in it, you just feel like down. I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like I've started seeing like a new a new me. Yeah, so when you get old and you start maturing, you realise, okay, I don't want to hold in because we all start to know our feelings and emotions when we're feeling down. Yeah. It's easy to feel down and then portray you not feeling down, but when you are feeling down, it's okay to have down days. Yeah. It's okay to feel 100%. fucked up. Like, yeah. People are always saying, oh, James, you're doing well, this and that. I still feel like going fucking nuts. Yeah. I still feel like getting a big bag of cocaine <laughs> and just going and fucking going wild. But I just know the consequences now. I know what's 100%. right for me. I know what's wrong for me. If I make mistakes... It's purely down to me. Yeah. I was very good at blaming everybody else. Mm. Every, all my actions is down to me. Yeah. Fuck everybody else. It's my life. I'm going to lead it the way I want to lead it. And for anybody watching as well, like, push on, kick on. Like, yeah. If you're battling, just don't battle with putting a plaster over yourself with alcohol and drugs because it'll just make you a hundred times oh, fucking 100 worse. Oh, hundred times worse. How are you feeling after today? Yeah, I feel a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. But you're an amazing pe- person, man. You've got great energy. Oh, thank you, I believe you, this is just then there, a, a, another chapter flip it and then kick on in life and, and do what the fuck you want to do this is the yeah. you've not even hit your prime yet do you know I what know, I mean I you're, you've all this shit that you came through man you just got to own it and um, yeah. but for coming on today and oh, telling your story man me. no it's been amazing yeah you've been like amazing like I says too. man you're, I think you're great yeah. great energy and I look forward to seeing what you do oh, for the rest of the future oh thank you James Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.